day again, everybody. Welcome back to the Dirty Pat Walsh channel here on YouTube with me, your host, Dirty Pat Walsh. I know I did a little trophy chew review earlier, and I put up a little short video earlier, um, but yeah, the the tobacco reviews, I think, are kind of just an added, an added extra thing these days, you know. Um, I look, I was looking through my playlist, Tales of My Sordid Musical Past, and I talk about a lot of bands I was in um, by the titles, but I did not see a title mentioning Wine With Everything. So, uh, as Ben Roland uh, requested, I'm going to try my best to give a concise little history of Wine With Everything in 15, in 14 minutes. Um... My friend Chris Brown and I started, well, Chris and I don't really talk anymore, but that's a long story. We, we, we've known each other since we were like 14 or 15. Uh, we met in the high school bathroom and because we liked punk rock, that's why we met. Um, yeah, he was my, he was my, uh, my brother for years. Um, and anyhow, we, uh, we had, I moved here from Oakville, and Chris shortly followed. Um, back in Oakville, Chris and I used to play his little band called Twig Martyr, and uh, kind of in the vein of wine with everything. Nobody liked us. <laughs> um, anyhow, when we moved, when, when we were settled here in town, doing stuff at the Union Theater, um, you know, the music scene here was very... Uh, it was very folk rock centered, you know. Um, it was all very kind of clean and family friendly, you know, to my recollection. I'm trying to think of, there was like one hard rock band in town that my friend Craig, uh, well, I was friends with everybody in the band, uh, called Numb, and uh, they were a fucking great band. But uh, there was no real rock outside of like this folk rock that was happening right and I you know the folk scene was cool I was trying to be a folk and blues singer you know on my own <clears throat> so that, that was cool but uh you know we want we came from the hardcore scene in Toronto you know um so Chris and I decided to start playing again much as we did in Oakville just you know punk rock is not Punk rock nowadays is not what it was in the beginning. It's now there's kind of like a style and a uniform, like a uniformity to it, right? Back the punk rock that Chris and I know is, it's just what you make. It's just the music that you make, and be it be it what it is, you know. Um, it's all about individuality, you know. So. Wine With Everything was by no means a hardcore band, you know. Uh, we were like, uh, Chris would, you know, gather stuff like tomato boxes and uh, cool buckets and, like, he had a fire bell symbol. He had a drum kit that he could just build out of garbage the day of the gig, you know. Um, I just played, I had a pig nose battery-powered amp and I had this shitty old Ibanez guitar, uh, that I tuned down to a to a open D tuning, and uh, you know we just kind of played like that. And uh, our now we we had met our friend uh, Charlie Patch at this time. Um, at the at the time, Charlie was known as Kathy, um, and we the three of us were like totally like-minded we just wanted to get wasted play crazy music and fucking party all the time you know what i mean and that's what we did uh, a wine with everything rehearsal would consist of like pretty much being a, on a two-week blackout bender hanging out together you know um but we played kind of noise rock you know like like i would kind of play kind of bluesy stuff but it would like totally branch out into experimental, like just like fucking going crazy, right? We weren't like an art, artsy rock band. It was like just a noise fest, you know? Chris banging on his boxes. 
uh, me w wailing away on the guitar. And uh, I actually kept the guitar pretty low key for the most part. Uh, but Charlie was made was what made Wine With Everything special. Charlie played, like, did spoken word through walkie-talkies, uh, played viola, uh, played, played Chris and Charlie both played bugle in the band. Um, oh, it was incredible. We just made a cacophonous noise. And, uh, you know, so anyway, we did a couple gigs in, like, the venues in town where you could do gigs, and we got banned from everywhere we played because <clears throat> we were such a wreck. And uh, so we did a lot of gigs in, in parking lots and alleyways in town. Um, our friend Stephanie would make hand make posters and hang them up around the only, you know, wine with everything after last call in the Food City parking lot or whatever. Um, I did find some wine with everything posters I have. They were usually pretty crass, um, like this one, you know. We played with this band called Annie's Panties a lot, <laughs> you know. Um, some of these, let's see, like, like this one, it's pretty cool. Uh, this is this is one that we did with uh, Joe Buck. <laughs> hey, Batch, you know. We just, we were all about being debaucherous, crude, you know, um, we made one album and, uh, called 100, well, it's not listed, it's called 100 Proof, um, yeah, that's where it is, 100 Proof, this was recorded, now it's not marked on it, but it was recorded live, uh, in an alleyway or a parking lot some of it, uh, and a lot of it was recorded on Backlash recordings with Ian Osborne. Um, now the stuff, the studio stuff we did was pretty fucking cool. Um, it was kind of like noise, noisy punk rock dub, you know. Um, I'm going to get my tape player going pretty soon and do a, do a, I'll, I'll play you some of what, what, what our album's like. Um, but yeah, we were drunk all the time. It was awful. <laughs> we had cra every gig, something crazy happened. Like uh, one time, uh, a woman came in who was lactating and fucking sprayed breast milk all over us. Um, you know, one one time we were playing some random guy. Like we were playing in this alleyway, and some random guy named Pedro comes up with a fucking full accordion, and he wants to wants to play with us. So, of course, we let him, you know. Um, we did a gig in a parking lot and uh, that had a big stairway going up to the Food City. And the parking lot was kind of outside the Union Theater. And uh, during the gig, somebody uh, lit uh, an, an ottoman, that, like a footstool that someone had put out by the side of the road. Uh, lit it on fire and kicked it down the stairwell while we were playing. It was pretty spectacular. But um, kind of the, we did a lot of crazy gigs. Like we did a five-hour solid gig at, at No Place one time. Uh, we used to play with Joe Buck an awful lot. Um, crazy gigs. But I'm going to tell you the... One of, we did a reunion show in like, I don't know, a few years ago, but that's probably the last time we'll ever play together. Um, it was like our 20th year reunion or something like that. Um, all the, all the bands in town when we were, when we were playing a lot, uh, thought we were a joke. They didn't take us seriously and we outlived them all, you know, <laughs> um, it, it's funny like that. But, uh, okay, so there's this band called Destination Gutter that was in town, and they were just, like, a super heavy, you know, the, the singer was all about, like, shock rock, you know. Uh, he'd walk around with a hatchet and a bucket of fake blood and stuff like that. It was kind of goofy stuff. And uh, so Sean challenged Wine With Everything to, uh, to a competition at the Trashateria, this kind of bigger venue in town. 
um, to see who was the most punk rock band, one with everything or Destination Gutter. And of course, the big mistake here was Destination Gutter headlined. Okay, they let us on first. Um, now, there is no question in my mind that we're going to out-punk Destination Gutter because we came from the punk rock scene. Destination Gutter are, like, not from that, you know? Not not from where we came from. Um, Sean, Sean, the singer of uh, Destination Gutter came up to me once and he's when I was working at the Only and he said, I'm prepared to cut off my little finger at the gig to show how punk rock we are. And I was like, that's cool, man. You do you. I'm going to play guitar with my fingers, you know. But uh, what happened was um, the, day, the day of the gig, um, we, had, we went to a, a pig roast uh, right before the gig to eat with our friends. And uh, we took the head of the pig and we put it on a bike chain and I was wearing it around my neck. And uh, the, the bar almost got shut down for the night because the, the bartender was a vegan who, who wasn't down with that at all. So I had to get rid of that. But uh, we also took acid that we bought on the street right before uh, from a sketchy dude. Um, and while, okay, so while we're playing... We open up, we play a couple songs, and then all of a sudden, out of the out of the back, Chris comes out to the front of the stage, and he fucking turns on two fire extinguishers from that he stole from a school, uh, and fucking blew it all over the crowd. The whole room was filled with this chemical dust. The room was full of four hundred people. Uh, had a capa- We were full to capacity, and. Uh, when the when the fire extinguisher dust settled, there were four people left. <laughs> so Destination Gutter got to play to four people. So we won, <laughs> hands down. We won. We out punk rock Destination Gutter. But uh, yeah, some little things kind of show on our attitude. Where like the the cover of this tape says, "My mom's passed out. I'll meet you at the show." You know, it's like, that's kind of where we were at in our lives. We just wanted to drink and party all the time. We did play Toronto a couple times. We played Symptom Hall in Toronto as part of a Peterborough Arts Night in Toronto. Uh, And we got to open up for Hot Piss uh, one time, another local heavy metal band, uh, at the Bovine Sex Club in Toronto. And that was pretty cool. But, uh, yeah, we were just, and we, we tag everywhere. Like, it's kind of our manifesto. We got a, we got a graffiti wherever we go. There's graffiti on the wall at Graceland that I put up saying wine with everything. There's graffiti all over Prague, um, other parts of Eastern Europe that, that Charlie put up. Uh, Chris used to have a stencil, and he'd just fucking spray paint our name everywhere everywhere it, like we were kind of like the cops were looking for us we were people of interest <laughs> for graffiti but uh anyhow yeah that's kind of the 15 minute version of uh wine with everything um it was uh, absolutely nuts like the people i can't really describe it because you kind of had to be there to really experience it but uh you know Playing in parking lots, um, you know, having handmade posters, you know, uh, <laughs> look at this one, this one's raw as fuck, <laughs> you know, we all, we were all about it, we were all about it. We were true to it, not new to it. But, yeah, all right. Be well, everybody. I hope you enjoyed the story. And uh, I'm going to get to playing you some wine with everything soon. Be well.